You're still watching the news at 10. Thank you for staying with us. Ahead of the March the 3rd local government council elections in Edo State, the All Progressive Congress APC has held a mega rally at the Samuel Bermudia Stadium in Benin City, the state capital, to canvass votes for its candidates at the polls. Addressing party faithful at the event, the national chairman of the APC, John Odige Oyegu, along with the other leaders of the party, ask members to throw their weight behind the flag bearers. More than 10,000 defectors from the opposition were also received at the well-attended event. Thousands of Edo State residents and supporters of the ruling APC gather at the Samuel Egbemudia Stadium in Benin City, the Edo State capital, as the All Progressives Congress stage a final rally to canvass for votes ahead of the Saturday local government elections. And as is tradition with political rallies and electoral campaigns, songs of praises and promises are reeled out to the cheering crowd. The men and women that we have put forward for the elections on Saturday are going to be the wake and see in your local government. The beginning of our struggle required that we rebuild, reorder, and eradicate Godfatherism in our politics. On, on this ground, in this stadium, we launch woman, Wago. Welcome to the party of greatness. It's not only a rally for the upcoming elections, the APC also seizes the opportunity to welcome defecting members from the People's Democratic Party into the APC and drum up support for the party for the 2019 presidential elections. Do we have your promise that just as on Saturday you will deliver this chairman? In February next year, you will also deliver an APC president of the Federal Republic. March the 3rd is the slated date for the local government elections in Edo State, a grassroots election in the tier of government closest to the people. Nigeria's Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed, is appealing to the media to help in nation building through reportage that will set an agenda for government. The minister declared what he termed as a tendency by some journalists to only portray the government in bad light. He was speaking at an event organized by the Guild of Editors in Abuja. These are very trying times for Nigeria. It does not matter who is in government. We seek your support, your understanding. We are not saying don't criticize us, but please be very fair and do it in context. You are partners in nation building. And we'll also appeal to you to look at the positive things the government has done also. But it helps you know, because we are not looking like collect and disseminate what the government has done. And please, in criticizing us, do it in context. These are trying times for the nation. And we need your understanding, we need your support. And I quite agree with them. Most speakers, both the um, Senate uh, Minority Leader and Representative of Nadi Gangote. And it's because there's a Nigeria that we have a Nigerian group of editors. Because there's a Nigeria that's a Dangote. Because there's a Nigeria that we're all here. If there's no Nigeria, we will not be here. And that's all from Abuja. We go right back to our Lagos studio where Ladi is standing by. Thank you very much, Ibrahim. The Lagos and Kano state governments have sealed a partnership deal that will enable both governments to jointly explore investment opportunities aimed at creating jobs and facilitating economic development. The deal marks the beginning of a better relationship between the two leading commercial cities in Nigeria as the Lagos Kano Economic and Investment Summit comes to a close. Thank you very much. Please be seated. The Lagos Kano Economic and Investment Summit kicked off on a high note, having in attendance prominent Nigerians, including the Vice President, Professor Yemi Shibaju, the Governors of Lagos, Kano, and Kebi State, as well as the Emir of Kano, the above Lagos, among others. 
state partnership as a tool for sustainable economic development is the theme of the summit. It is apt to stress that partnership and engagement such as this is the best tool to mitigate global economic uncertainty by building stronger relationships where information flows, including shared insights and extended collaboration, I must say at this juncture that stability, openness, and the common understanding encourage investments. We can grow the GDP for Nigeria from within the states and among the states. That's the message of this particular summit. I believe strongly, just the same way that the lagos KB partnership was taken as a joke, this is going to be a serious deal for the Nigerian economy. For two days, development experts and professionals from public and organized private sectors held sessions of extensive discussion on thematic areas they can jointly explore for potential investors. The most extensive interaction with states is in the area of tax administration. Uh, and, and so whilst there's been, um, there have been improvements, uh, there are still challenges in that area. In fact, our bank closed our branches in two other states because of the disincentive to investment, to remaining there. But you know what we did? We opened more branches in Lagos because we found that in Lagos, even though we still have a few challenges, it's still an investor-friendly um, destination uh, for us. The event ended with the signing of a memorandum of understanding which sees both states agreeing to expand the current level of economic and investment cooperation between them, especially in the areas of governance, security, internally generated revenue, agricultural value value chain, ease of doing business, as well as infrastructure in power, transportation and urban waste management, among others. A good round of applause for both governors, please. A technical working group is expected to be set up to oversee the implementation of the objectives of the MOU. Energy and environment saving strategies have been the way to go since the discovery of global warming and ozone depletion. Together, Haya and PZ Cousins as HPZ, major electrical appliance and home care manufacturers, have decided to take ownership of the conversation by releasing a new range of energy saving appliances into the market. The launch took place at HPZ's retail outlet Cool World in Lagos. If ever was a time to manufacture appliances that are eco-friendly, it's now. As some nations set targets to reduce their carbon footprint, Cool World is introducing its new energy-saving higher thermal refrigerators, freezers and air conditioners. They have less environmental impact, the ones that we are introducing today, and that makes them actually to be a good one compared with any other one in the entire world. So, zero ozone depletion, I'm sure that's what you want to know. HPZ also boasts excellent after-sales service. 40% energy saving. We ensure consistent high-level performance through our after-sales. In the presence of representatives from the Advertising Practitioners Council of Nigeria, the Standards Organization of Nigeria, the Federal Ministry of Environment, and other concerned parties, the products are unveiled. The old and the new. These meters indicate the energy consumption within the same time frame. Freezer that we are launching today. An added advantage the new higher thermal air conditioner has is its ability to run on a small generator. The CO2 emission for this is actually 97% reduced. Not only that, of course, because it consumes less energy, it cools faster. We are well spread out, actually. We are nationwide. I think out of all the home appliances brand, we are the ones that really have a good foothold across Nigeria. According to HPZ, the energy saving capacity cuts across all its new appliances without compromising old qualities of reliability and durability. Time for the business news of the day. Here is Anne Wawodo.
You first. First bank. Thanks a lot, Ladi, and welcome to Business News. The Minister of Finance, Mrs. Kemi Adioshno, says she is displeased with the 6% tax to gross domestic ratio for Nigeria, which is one of the lowest in the world. At a stakeholder's interactive session on tax amnesty held in Kaduna State, the minister appealed to tax evaders to take advantage of the voluntary assets and income declaration scheme all face persecution at its expiration by the end of this month. Tax to GDP ratio of Nigeria is 6%. It is one of the lowest in the world. We cannot be in the bottom division when it comes to tax collection and expect to be in the Premier League when it comes to development. It can't work. And so we must come together as one and do the right thing. There is no hidden agenda. But people must declare honestly and fully in order to derive the benefits of the VAIT program. Because when the program ends, I want people to be very assured that we have the data to be able to prove tax evasion and we will pursue very aggressive prosecution. And I think it's only fair. Having given nine months grace, appealed, talked to people, explained to people, reassured people that all we're really after is revenue. There's no hidden agenda. Nigeria's Finance Minister Kemi Adeoshu. Energy company Owando says there will be a delay in the release of its full year financial results for the year 2017. The Financial Reporting Council of Nigeria has indicated interest in undertaking a more detailed review of the company's audited financial statements due to the recent investigation by the Securities and Exchange Commission. Reports also say that Owando may not be able to file the accounts until the second week in the month of March. But the company says that it will continue to provide updates of its dealings. And today's trading at the local equities market has started the month of March downbeat as sell-offs dominated major bellwether stocks of the Nigerian Stock Exchange. Layo Adegoke has more for us. Hello and welcome to the Stock Market Report. Nigeria's stock market kicked off the first trading day of March with negative sentiments as investors wasted no time to reap from the gains earlier recorded in Wednesday's session. The profit taking resulted to a 175 billion naira depreciation in the market's total value, while the all share index fell back to the 42,000 level after dropping by 1.12%. The downturn is attributed to declines by bellwether stocks, particularly from the industrial goods and the banking sector. Japal all recorded the highest price increase out of 28 gainers, while FTN Cocoa Processing Company is the top decliner from a list of 31 losers. The shares of Transcop, Zenit Bank and GT Bank were the top three most traded equities, while total volume of shares traded for the day stands at over 370 million units. And that's the Stock Market Report. I am Layo Adegoki. Thanks a lot, Layo. Major world stock markets have also ended the first trading day of March deeper in the red. After volatile sessions, mixed earnings result in Europe and U.S. President Donald Trump's plan to implement tariffs on steel and aluminium imports next week. Here are the figures for today. And that's business news for tonight. Thank you for watching. I'm Anne Owawadu. It's back to you, laddie. You first. First Bank. Thanks a lot, Anne. Still ahead on the news at 10, Brazil team doctor reveals the star forward Neymar is out for three months as it prepares for the 2018 World Cup. That's on the sports news. Do stay on with us.